Yo guys, let's have a very serious talk. Just kidding, I hate seriousness. But let's have coffee together and talk about sex and astrology because this is something I know everything about. And also the people on my YouTube are gonna eat this shit up because they love when I talk about astrology. So if you're not already following me on YouTube, you should totally, or I guess it's not following on there, it's called subscribing. You should totally go subscribe to me on YouTube, you guys. Um, I've been on YouTube actually a lot longer than I've been doing this Facebook thing. Um, I've been on there for like four years. There's like a hundred videos probably, me talking about astrology and other things. But um, let's have coffee. And by the way, if you do not drink coffee out of a Beatles cup, you're not doing it right. You gotta do it with a Beatles cup. That's just the way to go. Uh, my username on YouTube, hi Katrina, yeah, say hi to me guys. My username is just Brittany Taylor. I think it's just Brittany Taylor. You'll find me. I drink mine out of a Star Wars cup. <laughs> well, that's, that's okay too. But it has to be like something cool, right? Otherwise, why, like why? Why are you even doing it, right? Um, <laughs> hi, Sandy. So yeah, or like a Joy of Living mug. That's coming. Um, so this is my patio, you guys. I don't know if I've ever even really shown you where I live. I actually have a beautiful apartment here in British Columbia, Langley, actually, and it's fabulous. Hi, April. So say hi to me, you guys. This is my apartment. There's my bookshelf. Anyways, let's get on with it. Let's get on with it. Let's just get on with it, okay? Let's do the business. Let's do the deed. So, okay, here's how I wanna do this. If you guys wanna ask me any questions, you can go ahead and ask me questions, but I'm just gonna go through like every sign and talk about what they're like in bed. Um, and then everybody can have some value from this. But what I do wanna mention is that um, sex in astrology is actually represented by uh, the planet Mars in your natal chart, especially for men, Mars, and also for women, Venus as well. So if you really want an accurate description of this, although you'll probably relate to what I'm saying just based off your sun sign, like if you don't know your natal chart, you're probably going to want to know your natal chart and know especially your Mars and Venus signs, okay? So just Google free natal chart and it'll tell you all of your planets. Hi, Christina. And you're gonna wanna look for your Mars and Venus sign. Um, and that will tell you more about how you are in bed, um, especially Mars for men and Venus for women, but both, okay? April says, I have a joy of sex cup. Perfect. I need one of those. Um, <laughs> Katrina says, gorgeous, I miss VC and I love your hair. You used to be here? Fabulous. Yes, so, and I feel like this is very fitting because I put this robe on just because I'm naked, not because I actually want to wear a robe. It's actually too hot. Like, it's too hot in there. I have the heat up too high. So that's why I came out here on my patio so I could wear this robe. But I feel like this is super fitting because, like, I can imagine myself right now in this robe, like, at a hotel, like, and I've just had some fabulous sex, right? And then I'm having coffee. Like, it's very, it's very fitting, I feel, for this live stream. So Katrina says, lived in Vancouver in 2014, coming for a visit in July. Ooh, fun. Maybe we could go for coffee or something. Beatles cups only. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, so let's get on with it. Let's talk about sex and astrology, you guys. So um, maybe I'm going to go inside. I don't know. I don't know what I'll do. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about the fire signs first, okay? So we're going to talk about Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius, okay? Because... Let's just be honest, they're probably the most exciting people, um, probably the least boring. So let's talk about Aries. Let's talk about Aries first. So if you do know, <laughs> let's talk about sex, baby. See, I knew you guys would love this. I knew you guys would just be so down for this. I was going to do this as a written post, and then I was like, holy fuck, there's just, there's just too much to write. 
so I gotta go live, right? That's how it goes sometimes. So, okay, let's talk about Aries. <laughs> so Aries is ruled by Mars. If you didn't know, now you know. Um, so Mars is actually the sex planet, like I said earlier. Hi, Joe. Hi, Dar. So these people are generally very sexual, and they, they have a lot of sexual energy, like, all the time. It's not just, like, when the sex is about to happen. They're having it all day long. They're, like, so, but here's the thing. Aries can be... Uh, sometimes described as like the one minute man. So it's, it's a quick, it's a quick experience. Okay. And, uh, but for the women too, it's not just for the men, like they are so fired up all day long. They're so sexual all day long that when the sex actually happens, it's like they come really fast like that. And then they're like, okay, well let's go do something else now. Or maybe they're ready to just keep on going because there is so much fire and energy. Um, and there's also, and Leo's have this too. There's also this feeling of like being the best. And so they inwardly feel that they are like really good at whatever they're doing in bed. So they, they have this natural confidence and then it ends up being true right? Because everything that you think is real. So if you think you're really good in bed and you like fully believe that, um, even if maybe you're not, it ends up being true anyways. And you end up attracting to you people who can naturally receive your energy anyways. So, and here's the thing too, you guys, being good in bed is more than just being good at a certain technical thing that, or whatever you're doing. It's like, being able to attract the right person who can who can properly receive your energy. Okay, so someone who's actually a compatible match, right? It's not it's not really just like being good at like a strategy, right? Because that's like boring as fuck. But it's about being able to attract the right people. And actually that's kind of like doing uh, an online business and attracting soul clients. So uh, <laughs> that's what they all say, Dar. You guys are funny. Anyways, look at your Mars placement as well because like I'm talking about sun signs right now, but actually the sex planet is Mars, you guys. Um, and either way with Aries, it's gonna be a fun experience. It's not gonna be boring. Um, they're probably kind of dominating uh, more than not. And um, oh my God. So that's kind of about Aries. Um, so there's that, there's a lot of sexual energy there and sometimes it's quick, right? It's a quick release. It's a quickie. They like quickies. And they like, you know, um, little, like, fun, like, doing it in weird places. Actually, and Sagittarius likes that as well. But we'll get to that. So, okay, let's talk about Leo now. Katrina says, again, that's what they all say. And also, I'm not at all looking for a boyfriend at all, at all right now. I'm very self-obsessed. And there is so much time that I spend focusing on my own self and my own selfish ways that I don't have any time for anyone. <laughs> Hello, Drayton. Okay, so let's talk about Leo. Let's talk about Leo in bed. So Leo in bed is like the big production, right? Um, even more so than Aries, there is a natural um, confidence and they feel like they are God's gift to man or, or woman. So they walk around with that kind of confidence and they absolutely definitely take that confidence into the bedroom as well. And so it doesn't actually matter even what they're doing, it's going to turn out well for them usually. Or people are gonna think they're totally egotistical and full of themselves, which people already think that anyways, but that does also carry over to the bedroom as well. So usually they're very giving though, more so than their Aries, uh, other fire signs, more so than Sagittarius or Aries. Um, the Leo, although they are so self-focused and they so feel like they are gods, they also want their partner to feel that they are gods as well. So they're very giving. Okay, and like they will not stop until you are happy and and they really want to know that you're happy. And so there's there's a very giving quality with Leo that a lot of people forget to mention when they're talking about Leo. They forget to mention that like, yeah, they're super self-absorbed and, and full of themselves, but they also want you to feel as good as they feel. And another thing with Leo energy, too, is that they naturally just feel so good because they're ruled by the sun. So 
even just with their energy, like let's not even talk about sex for like one second, but even just with their energy, they can light you up just from their own presence. Just from like being around them, they don't even have to like do anything. They're just filled with this like sunny energy. It's, it's alignment, right? They're in alignment. So people naturally feel good around them and that extends to the bedroom as well. So, and if you guys have any questions about anything, you could totally ask me to, this is like a Q and A live stream. Okay, let's go back outside. In the morning when I'm having coffee, I need to move around. Like I just, I just can't, I can't sit still you guys. So, okay. Welcome to my patio again. So let's talk about Sagittarius then. So Sagittarius is the uh, half man, half horse, the centaur, right? So they could be called animals in in bed and it's usually a person with Mars and Sagittarius or Venus and Sagittarius or just like a lot of Sagittarius that is into doing like really freaky things um, in the bedroom, whether it be like sex outside or um, like they're, they're just all over the map and there's a lot of energy there and they can also have that, you know, one minute man issue going on because there's, there's so much sexual energy. But usually it's a fun experience and it's not at all serious too. So if you're one of these people that needs a lot of emotional support during sex, a lot of like, I love you, baby, like I'm here for you and stuff, you're probably not going to get it from someone who's a Sagittarius. Uh, probably out of all of the signs, they're, they're going to be the most focused on like purely fun and not at all like the, the emotional part of sex, which could be annoying to some people, but for some it would be really fun, right? It's a really fun experience. So that kind of sums up the fire signs. What should I talk about next? What should I talk about next? The earth signs? Okay, let's talk about the earth signs. Um, so let's talk about Taurus. So Taurus, the bull, they are naturally ruled by Venus. So they do enjoy sex a lot. They enjoy all kinds of touching. They're very sensual, like they like a lot of you know, like massages and touching and like luxury. The fastest way to warm up a Taurus uh, in the bedroom is to probably buy them stuff, buy them nice things and, you know, take them out to a nice dinner and then they're just gonna like open right up to you. Um, and they, yeah, they enjoy sex more than most. They, it's usually a longer experience, sometimes too long, that it's gonna like bore some of the more fiery people to death. But um, generally they're very loving as well. And you know, there's a lot of hugs and touching and you know, it's a, it's a good experience for sure. And it's a memorable experience. Although some people would say the earth signs are the most boring. I would say that they are the most actually connected with the physical body and sex is more about the actual physical aspect of it than, you know, like what's going on in the mind or, you know, the fantasy of it, the, like the, like the kinkiness or it, it's more just straight up in the body with, with earth people. So earth people, um, are Taurus, Virgo and Capricorn. So let's talk about Virgo. Let's talk about Virgo, you guys. So Virgo is ruled by Mercury and Virgos tend to have kind of like a technical approach to sex and usually they're quite like well versed on what exactly needs to be done and where and like the right spots and and like they just like have this understanding of like how to please people but they could be totally lacking in soul because the thing with Virgo is there's kind of this in this inherent inferiority complex in Virgo so the women or well the men too they they can have this kind of like worshiping thing where they, they like to you know put people up on a high pedestal and see them as gods and and do like sort of like the servant thing with these people so there can be like a hint of that in sex as well and with Leo's actually there can be they like to be worshipped as well there can be this worshiping thing but um yeah, with Virgos, there can be this tendency to put themselves below other people without even, without even realizing that they're doing that. Like they just think they're being helpful. Like they just think, oh, I'm going to please you in this way and I'm going to make sure to do all these things. But it could be coming from, like that's not necessarily bad, but it could be coming from this feeling of like, 
well, I'm not very good, so I need to prove myself by doing everything right and making sure that you are like totally pleased. And then whenever you're you're doing anything just to please another and not um, for your own pleasure, like you're sort of like coming out of your center and then it's like, so that there can be some hangups. Kara says my husband is a Virgo. He's so analytical about everything. Oh, that's funny. What's his Mars? I know you know astrology, so I can ask you that. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a little bit about Virgos, but they can also end up being some of the most talented people because they've studied this shit. They probably read all the books on it or, you know, they've watched all the porn or whatever. Like they, they are masters of it. So they can be, if they can just drop that like inferiority thing, which we all have to some degree, but they like especially have. And um, what else do I want to say? Sex at work. Virgos and Capricorns. Sex at work. That's a thing. Um, yeah, so Virgo, I think, would be more the archetype of, like, the worker. And then um, the, <laughs> the Capricorns is more like the boss complex. We'll get into Capricorns here in a sec. So April says, what about men as Virgos, specifically foreplay, my guy is overly oral. Well, that makes perfect sense because see, he, he wants to be of service to you. And that's why they could spend a lot of time with that is because like, um, there's this need to be of service with all Virgos and that can be a really great thing. But if they're doing it like at the expense of their own happiness and like they don't actually feel good doing it, which is rare, usually they feel very good being of service. But let's just say in a rare case that they, they're not really feeling good about themselves so they're overly focused on serving you to like take the attention away from themselves. But usually it ends up being a very good thing and they end up being very good lovers, like something to remember because you've never had someone like actually know all these places and things. So. Kara says his Mars is in Libra. Oh, perfect. Mars and Libra. I like them. So yeah, we'll get to Libras here too. But first let's talk about Capricorns. Okay. So Capricorns, although they are overly focused and serious and life is very serious business and it's very much about hard work and success and achievement. Um, the bedroom is the same, but they can actually lighten up in the bedroom. Like, and they can be um, some of the most sexual creatures because here's the thing they spend so much time working and improving their lives and it kind of like the energy builds up and it, it just builds up and they don't focus on sex for a long time and then when it does happen it's just like this huge wild thing and you'd be surprised because Capricorns oh god they can seem like they're like super boring and inhibited but then um they're not like that in the bedroom. That's actually one of the places where they can really let loose and they're they're very just naturally good. Um, they could, I mean, some of them maybe are boring, but usually in bed is where they can actually let out their crazy side. And you'd be surprised with like how much power and passion a Capricorn has and it's partially because they work so damn hard all the time so it's like this is their one chance at like release or fun um, provided that they're not like doing anything else fun which usually they're they're not so <laughs> so that can be fun and there's this power and like authority and like I said yeah there could be like this boss complex they like to be the boss and they they, they want to sort of boss you around which can be good if you like that and or they can have a hard time to really like just relax and, and let go. And they too, although they can be described in real life as some of like the more like selfish goal oriented people, um, there's a lot of focus on service and serving you. And um, they're actually not selfish in the bedroom. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say. And I do feel like there can be kind of the one minute man, like they can actually um, not last very long because I think, there's such a build up and then it just like releases, right? So, okay, that's Capricorn. Did I mention the boss thing? So, what should I talk about next? Air? Is that the only one left? Oh no, air and water. Air and water, you guys. So, 
Let's talk about the air signs and then we will finish with the water signs, you guys. Okay, what time is it? I gotta go to hot yoga. Okay, I don't have to go to hot yoga for an hour. So let's talk about the air signs. Let's talk about Gemini. So Geminis get a lot of hate on the internet, you know, for being flaky um, or, you know, being kind of like the cheating sign or whatever. And I don't really feel that that's necessarily true at all, but I do feel that sex is approached from a very mental um, perspective. So it begins in the mind and there can be a lot of like mental activity about sex. So this is where we're kind of like thinking about sex all day long, even though it's not really happening, but it can also be so overly mental that when, and especially with Mars and Gemini too, see, I'm, I'm talking about Mars. I'm trying to talk about sun signs, but I just, you have to look up your Mars because Mars is really the sex planet. So there can be so much mental energy that by the time that you actually get to the, the bedroom, you're so disconnected from the body because you're totally in the mind um, that it doesn't, it's not quite as good as what you planned for. If you're having problems as an air sign, I think that could be why. It's because sex is so mental for you. So something that could probably help you in the bedroom more is if you're having like a really intense conversation. Like I think a Gemini would really enjoy like a heated debate with their partner and then like that have that lead to sex rather than like just go straight into the physical. Let's start with like some like intense communicating. Um, Kara says, I'm a cancer sign. Can't wait to hear about the water signs. Yay. Okay. My husband is a Gemini moon. Can see what I mean with the analytical. Oh my God. Yeah. So wait, he's a Virgo with Gemini moon. Oh, that's a lot of thinking. So yeah, or no, he had Mars in Virgo. I think you said. So yeah, Gemini, but Gemini's can be some of the most creative as well. So it's not gonna be boring. It's probably gonna be exciting unless they're so far in their head that they're not even connected with their body and then that's not gonna go over so well. But it's usually gonna be kind of an exciting thing. There's gonna be lots of talk about it before it actually happens and like, oh, this is what I'm gonna do to you and like things like that. Um, like playful, flirty, communicating, communicating about sex like prior to the actual sex. Um, and as far as like the cheating thing that people always say about Geminis, I mean, I think every sign can cheat. It's not really like a one sign thing, but if it was a Gemini, it would be because they're so mutable and they're very good at like being all things to all people. So yeah, they can be very flirty with everybody, but so can Libra. So let's talk about Libra now, you guys. So we've got Libras are actually ruled by Venus as well but they're not as physical as Taurus. They're more in their minds as well. So Libras enjoy sex from a mental... Sorry, I was getting a call. So Libras enjoy sex from a mental perspective as well. And uh, they're very into like beauty in their um, own self, but also in other people as well. So they're the ones that are attracted by the people that are very beautiful and graceful and um, as, as much as they can be kind of bossy in their own lives, when it comes to sex, they they like to be led, right? They like to be taken and, you know, shown um, a good time. Sorry, I got distracted. Someone was calling me. So Libras can also be into like the, the creative types as well. And they're real lovers of life. And you'd be surprised um, because I find with Libras, Capricorns too, they can have this sort of like properness about their behavior. Like they, they seem very like prim and proper, but then when you get to the bedroom, they're like very sexual and, and it's quite an experience and they just love it. They, they love it. So Libras are the real lovers and they usually love lots of sex and have many partners. I would think if they're not just with one they're with many <laughs> because they're flirts too, like Gemini's, they're flirts. Libras are definitely flirts and they enjoy the whole process of it, not just the actual sex part. They're into the whole thing, the first meeting, the like how it turned into that, right? That they really love because they're, they're real lovers. Okay, let's talk about Aquarius, you guys. So Aquarius in the bedroom. 
Aquarius's are very interesting people. They can be the ones that are kind of into the freaky, different, unknown things. They can be into people that are from a very different background to them. Like, that can be a turn on someone who is like totally foreign. But really what I noticed with Aquarius is, is like, well, my mom has Venus and Mars and Aquarius actually. And she's, she's dated guys like of every type. You know what I mean? Like there's not, there's not a solid type that we have with Aquarius. There's kind of like a universal love for all humanity. So in the bedroom, they can be um, very mental as well. They need a mental connection in order to feel turned on. Repeat, they need a mental connection in order to feel turned on. Unless they're totally like cut off from their own, their whole self, usually sex is mental as well, like with the other air signs. Hi, Sam. Blonde brings out the hot and empowered goddess in you. Thank you. So yeah, Aquarius is, they can kind of be all over the map um, with things and like there can be an unemotional side to sex as well, like where they can totally cut off from emotions. Well, they do that in life as well. So, or they can be the ones that are kind of into the freaky stuff, but at the same time, they, I don't think that they really like to be dominated. They, or yeah, they like to be the one in control because there's kind of like a closet control freak in them. So they like to kind of be the one to lead things and, and um, probably more important to them than even sex is friendship. And, you know, having that like, a universal love connection with the people that they're with. They have to be with someone who they think is smart and that they can respect and preferably who's a bit different than them. <laughs> like they don't want to be with someone who is of the exact same personality type and traits. That's for sure. They like, they like uniqueness. They like differentness that can turn them on. Someone who's totally like out there can turn them on, but who's also intelligent and good with people. That's their thing. So, okay, let's talk about the water signs, okay? So let's talk about Cancer. Cancers. Cancers have a very warm, nurturing, and loving energy. And sex with them would be like, I feel like a warm motherly hug. <laughs> Even with the men. There's, there's a very nurturing quality. They really, they want you to feel good, right? They're very giving and giving and giving and giving. There's not a lot of selfishness inherent in the sign at all. They want you to feel good. That is the main priority. But also they use sex as a form of like comfort and security. So I, I've seen this before with like cancer men where it was like, like they needed sex because that, like I could just feel it was coming from like this insecurity like I'm not enough or or something and like so they they needed lots of sex so like just because they're very emotional it doesn't mean that they're not like total freaks either and it doesn't mean they're like needing to just be with one person only they just need it because for them it's this sense of like security and like it's like coming back to the mother's womb or like for the men it's like coming back to you know sucking on her tit like they just like need that nurturing <laughs> and they need to give it to other people as well like they live for like that nurturing like to love and be loved maybe they want to cook for you um they but more importantly than anything they just want you to feel safe and loved and in pleasure but yeah there can be kind of a neediness around it as with other things as well i feel like cancers when not dealt with like when they haven't dealt with their emotions hi Matthew when they haven't dealt with their emotions and their like own emotional hang-ups it's when they can kind of have this needy attitude towards sex or, or anything and like where they just like need it but then once they have it they're very giving to you but it, they need it you know what I mean it's coming from like this sometimes it can be coming from this unhealthy place but at the highest level it would be coming from this absolute like love for all of humanity and like it's kind of like the divine mother like the mother love it's it's a, it's a beautiful feel so cancers really have that um but also like capricorn i feel like they can be into um like the boss thing where either they're the boss or someone else is the boss and they're at work or um they're they're, they're fun people so yeah that's cancer um what's the next water so scorpio Oh my God, I probably should have talked about Scorpio first 
this is something that I've noticed, you guys, and if any of you are astrologers on here, I know Kara is, um, have you noticed that if you do a video like on YouTube and you title it with Scorpio in the title, you get like 10 times more views on the video if you talk about Scorpio. Scorpio or Leo seem to get the most views. Like if you put that in the title of your video, Scorpio or Leo. And it's because I think people are obsessed with Scorpios because Scorpios have this magnetizing hypnotic power, but Leos are obsessed with themselves. So they're watching all the videos about themselves. <laughs> I don't know. That's just, that's just my theory <laughs> about it, you guys. So, um, Kara, that's me, a Cancer, although my Aries rising in Mars and Leo gives it an interesting twist. Oh my god, I cannot believe that you have Aries rising and Mars and Leo. So do I. Soul sisters, that's amazing. And I'm a Taurus. We're very compatible, Kara. And I love your work. I love what you're doing. I think you are so amazing. And I'm like honored that you're on here watching my video. So, very cool. Um, you should watch my video on Mars and Leo, by the way, on YouTube. It's one of the, my favorite videos I've ever done. Um, I think I really made a fun description of Mars and Leo, by the way. It's like my favorite. Um, yeah, and I actually have a video for every single Mars sign. So if you do watch this video and you want to know what your Mars sign is, because like I said throughout this whole video, Mars is the planet of sex. So if you want to know what your Mars sign is, Google that shit. Or maybe if you're really nice to me, I'll look it up for you. But you'll probably have to pay me $5,000 um, before I will do that. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, and yeah, you can go watch your video or my video that I've done on your Mars sign because I've done all 12. And you're a Taurus moon. Oh my God. You're amazing too. Hi, Kella. You're a magnet today. Yeah, I feel that too. I'm in a really good energy, even though I wasn't. You guys, honestly, when I woke up, I was like in one of those moods where I was just like, Ugh. and then I made a decision. I was like, no, I'm not going to be in this shitty mood, even though I woke up in kind of a shitty mood. Do you guys notice? Well, ladies, do you notice that? Okay. The first two weeks of my cycle, I'm like super good vibes and I have like really positive dreams, a lot of like sex dreams and like, but just dreams where everything's working out and then I wake up in a really good mood. And then the second two weeks of my cycle, like my monthly cycle, I have like fucking nightmares or like not nightmares, but just like in my dreams, like shitty things happen. And then I wake up and I'm just like, ugh. But I think it's totally hormonal because I'm always tracking my cycle and like my hormones and what's going on. And like, I just, yeah. So anyways, I woke up in one of those moods, but then I was like, no, I'm not going to do this today. I'm going to be fabulous. And I put on some positive music and I just started dancing around and made myself an omelet and some coffee. And then I got the idea to do this video and I'm super happy I did it. This has been super fun and I'm going to post it to my YouTube after too, because they love when I talk about astrology on there. Yeah. Breakthrough energy for sure. Totally. So, what was I talking about? Scorpio. So we've got two more signs left, you guys. So let's talk about Scorpio. So Scorpio is the sign that is known for sex. It's, it's like that, it, like when people think Scorpio, they think sex, right? Although there's many other, you know, qualities of Scorpio, mostly when people think Scorpio, they think sex. And for Scorpio, sex is a very deep, transformative experience it's very emotional even if they don't let that on I know some Scorpio men they like pretend they're not emotional but they they are <laughs> it's like a cancer pretending they're not emotional it's like okay you are <laughs> always fabulous Kala says yeah so it's a very deep and transformative experience there is a lot of pressure on themselves I feel like as well to be like this sex god um, and but they are because they have this emotional depth like they're so psychic that they're in tune to your body and they know exactly what you need and how to do it and like it's it's not like like i think leo and the fifth house um leo and the fifth house sex represents like playful sex and fun and laughing and like lot like just like animal kind of sex but then when we go over to scorpio in the eighth house it's like deep soul transforming like crazy sex so it's a, it's a different flavor um and so scorpios are known for that and and they can be yeah very powerful very jealous very much wanting to like own the partner and like dominate them or like even if it's not dominating them they want to be so good that the partner is totally obsessed with them 
afterwards. So there could be kind of an ulterior motive to people with a lot of Scorpio in their chart, like where the sex isn't just about the fun of sex. It's about like, I'm going to rock your world so that you're totally fucking obsessed with me afterwards so that you'll never leave me and I don't have to feel vulnerable. I don't think anyone's ever said it like that, you guys. That was like, but that's what it is. I swear to God, that is what sex for Scorpio is. It's totally like that. But it's an experience you should probably have in your lifetime <laughs> if you haven't. So, okay, let's talk about Pisces. Let's talk about Pisces. The last sign is going last again. So, Pisces. Pisces is the last water sign. They need to be loved. But here's the thing with Pisces. They are so adaptable that, this is the crazy part, they could seem like any of these other signs. Okay, hi Oliver. They could seem like any of the signs. They, and if they're with you, hi Christina, you're still here, yay. <laughs> The Pisces are here. So they can literally, like, whoever they're with, they can just become the counterpart required of them, if that makes sense. Like, so there's there's a really submissive quality as well. Like, they can just be who they need to be in the moment. So they can be very good lovers with pretty much anybody. <laughs> Not that they're with everybody, but they can be <laughs> as well. Because here's this mutable quality. Again, they... they can sometimes like multiple people but they have this ability to just merge souls with everybody heck yeah Christina says yeah they have this ability to just merge well with anybody so they can take on any characteristic of any of the signs that they're wanting to in that moment but I also find that sex for Pisces can be a very um it's like a it's a fantasy more than a reality there can be a lot more sex just in their um, dreams, like a lot of sex dreams, or like they're maybe like watching a lot of porn in some cases, or like it's not a real reality, or the people that they find themselves attracted to are not available, or they're not available to be with those people. Maybe they're in a relationship, but they're like attracted to someone else, and it's just like this, this never consummated thing with Pisces. It's like, it's a dream. It's a total dream. But if you do manage to snag these fish in real life, and this is the thing too I find about Pisces that's like a perfect way to describe Pisces, is um, they're like fish. And you know what it's like when you pick up a fish like out of the water? It's like really slippery. And it's like, oh my God, like I can hold it, but like it's hard and it's kind of gross. No, I'm just kidding. It's not gross with a Pisces. But like when you pick up a fish, it's slippery and it could just slip right out of your hands. And that's kind of what Pisces are like in life. But um, definitely also in love, too. They can be, you know, in with one foot and out with the other because they're just, they're so open to love. They're so energetically open to other people. So they can also have this tendency to not be able to say no. So they can actually find themselves having sex that they don't even really like as much as the stuff that's going on in their head. Um, wet and slippery, Scott says. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They can find themselves in situations where like they're they're not enjoying it as much as they're enjoying their own fantasy land sex and it's because there's this inability to say no. But if they can come into their power, come into their goddess energy and Pisces is quite similar to Cancer. I find in that they do possess this like divine mother energy where they can really create this like nurturing, warm, caring feeling to whoever they're with men and women both and but the the difference between Pisces and Cancer is Pisces can do that to everybody and Cancer will just do it to like the chosen people perhaps but Pisces are so energetically open that they just they can create this safe beautiful loving space for everybody and um sex can be like that as well and there can be lots of giving lots of massages they're, they're also like Virgo with the they can have this complex around like worshiping people or being worshipped um it's never like a totally equal thing okay and one last thing i want to say about pisces too they can be into secret relationships and that is kind of fun for them because pisces is ruled by the 12th house which is kind of like the unconscious mind so there can be a lot of like 
unconscious sex stuff bubbling up to the surface in order to be healed. And sometimes this can be healed in the form of like hidden relationships or or like cheating. Um, not that all Pisces are cheaters or anything, but like I said earlier about the heart, is that their heart is very open to everybody. And so they attract partners who are also very open to everybody as well. So there can be like the cheating or being cheated on type of thing going on with Pisces, which ultimately, this is the good part, leads them to an understanding of souls and unconditional love. And sex is about love for Pisces too. Although depending on some of the other placements, they can disconnect with love because like I said, they can be anyone that they want. They can be any sign. They can just put on that mask for the day and be it. So if Pisces wants to put on the mask of, I don't need love, I only want sex, they can put that on. But ultimately at the heart of them, they need more love than all of us. So go give your Pisces friend a hug and thank you for watching this video, you guys. And don't forget to check out my YouTube channel if you haven't already. I've got a lot of astrology videos on there. And find out your Mars sign because that is actually how you are in bed. And then watch my video on it and change your life, heal your life. Know, know yourself. And also, just a reminder that I have open space to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, you guys, for six weeks. This is the most in-depth package I've ever created. And you get not just one, not just two, but three one-on-one -on -one sessions with me, you guys. So message me if you want to work with me at this deeper level for this low cost. Uh, the price is going to be going up a lot this year. This is going to be the last chance to work with me at that deeper level for that cost. It's 2K Canadian. And you also get unlimited Voxer support with me. And I'm super excited about it. It's gonna be fabulous. So message me if you wanna work with me at that deep level. This is the only way to work with me at this time. And thank you so much for watching, you guys. I love all of you. Christina said, yes, love me, great video. <laughs> exactly. So we'll talk super soon. And remember, you came for the joy of living. Night, guys. Or not night. Why did I say night? It's because I always do videos at nighttime. Um, it's actually 11 in the morning. I'm going to hot yoga very soon. Like in 20 minutes, I'll be going to hot yoga. <laughs> Why? No, I love it. I always love it after. So yeah, you guys, thanks for being with me on this fun, long video. We'll talk soon. And bye.